For months, travelers, politicians, and local business owners have complained about the lack of cross-border traffic and tourism dollars, many of them pointing to the hassle of the Arrive Can app and the strict quarantine rules on the Canadian side. Well, now, almost all restrictions have been dropped, which should make it easier to travel back and forth. But instead, this is what drivers had to deal with over the weekend. All three bridges had long lines over an hour wait to get into the United States. Yes, it was a long weekend for both countries, but still, you would have hoped officials were prepared for this additional traffic. And even tonight, look at the backup on the Rainbow Bridge right now. It's a Tuesday night. With so much attention over the last year to ease up on travel restrictions, how did we end up here and what is the holdup now? Joining us now is Congressman Brian Higgins to help explain. He has been urging Canadian officials to drop travel restrictions to try and get the flow of people and dollars back to pre-pandemic numbers. Congressman, we thank you for being here. We have heard you criticize the Arrive Can app and the strict rules on the other side of the border in the past. So those have now been lifted, but now people crossing into western New York they're still dealing with long lines at the bridges, and we are wondering, certainly anyone stuck in that traffic would be wondering why. Is this a staffing issue here in the U.S.? And if so, what steps are you taking to help improve things? We're told that uh, both on the U.S. side and the Canadian side, it's a staffing problem. Uh, but there's an adverse multiplier effect as well. Uh, the, the situation with the nexus passes uh, for both Canadian and U.S. travelers is a mess and it needs to get fixed. Uh, but specifically the problem this past weekend, it was the Canadian uh, Thanksgiving, and that is historically, traditionally, uh, high volume. And uh, the Customs and Border Protection on the American side should have anticipated that. Uh, I guess there's some budget problems as it relates to overtime, uh, but that's inexcusable because when you know that there is going to be a holiday weekend or a day where there is high volume, you have to make sure that you have adequate staffing to promote uh, the efficient flow of traffic uh, between the United States and Canada. Otherwise, you know, people adjust their economic behavior to avoid the bridge altogether. And that's the last thing we want in terms of our, uh, the economics of Western New York as it relates to Canadians coming into Western New York, coming into Buffalo, but also uh, Americans traveling in Southern Ontario. I want to talk to you about the nexus issue in a moment, but first, you know, there are fewer restrictions than there were, but are there any additional restrictions here in the U.S. that you believe should be dropped altogether, or even tweaked a little bit that could help improve that flow of travelers into Western New York? Yeah, I sure do. I think that, you know, when you have a crisis, you know, you'd rather be safe than sorry. So uh, there are restrictions that are imposed, not only during COVID, but 9-11 uh, as well. And when those uh, those crises dissipate, uh, a lot of those restrictions are still in place. And as I said, if, you know, the greatest inducement to travel is ease of travel. And there was a time in Buffalo and Western New York, and many people remember this, where it was very simple to travel from uh, Buffalo to the Canadian shores of Lake Erie, Bay Beach, Crystal Beach, Thunder Bay. And it's much more difficult now. And what happens is people will adjust their economic behavior because of the difficulty of that. And we lose the economic and life quality benefit uh, from ease of, of travel. And that is unacceptable. Our economy in Buffalo is highly dependent on the Canadian consumer. Um, the province of Ontario, Fort Erie, up through and including uh, the greater Toronto area is 15 million people. It's 40% of the entire population of Canada. If you look at you know professional sports franchises, our retail economy, our healthcare economy, our arts and cultural community, our airport economy, uh, much of that is dependent on the Canadian consumer, which makes that work. And we're losing that. And my concern is if this is not fixed, I don't want to only go back to pre-pandemic. I want to go back to a time when travel was much easier. And we obviously have to keep it safe, but through technology, we have those tools without inconveniencing people. And certainly we know with human, just their be humans with their behavior, if it's too difficult, often we'll say, well, we're just gonna do something else instead. 
And one of the big issues has been with the Nexus passes that it's been very difficult. We've heard from our viewers taking up to nine, 10 months. Why is there still a de delay and what can be done to speed that up and, and make the process easier, make the whole process easier? It's broken on both sides of the border. You don't have personnel to uh, do the personal appointments that have to occur on both sides of the border. That process needs to be reformed. As you said, uh, there's an adverse multiplier effect because those people that aren't using Nexus are contributing to the volume in the traditional lane. So it's incumbent upon everybody. So, this I'm uh, communicating uh, with the Commissioner of Customs and Border Protection uh, to make it very, very clear in no uncertain terms that these issues need to get resolved and sooner rather than later. And what's been the feedback to you since then? What have you heard back as far as that goes? Well, this uh, recent communication was uh, prompted by the delays this weekend, uh, so we have no response yet. The, le the letter went out today, uh, but we will follow it up with a phone call and we will hold them uh, accountable for what it is they're supposed to be doing, and that is making sure, managing uh, cross-border traffic between the United States and Canada, keeping it safe, obviously, but also making it efficient so that we don't lose the economic benefit of living along the northern border. Meanwhile, Congressman, we're heading into what's promising to be a busy holiday travel season. One poll has 60% of Americans planning a trip in the next few months here. So it's, there's fair warning. So what steps are being taken now to prepare for that uptick and, and any message to those planning to travel over the border or even those who may be hesitant and, again, consider avoiding it altogether? Well, that's the very question I need to ask the commissioner, is you know better than I, uh, Customs and Border Protection, which weekends during the year, which season during the year are the peak travel times and what are you doing relative to personnel to anticipate that so as to ensure uh, that the traveling public, whether you're from Buffalo and traveling to uh, Ontario or Ontario to Buffalo, that that is a pleasant experience. It is not only an important economic issue, it's also important in terms of our life quality. And it's a pretty simple uh, question that should be answered by people that have a budget uh, to address all of these problems. But when you have a weekend, when you have volume delays because there is not enough personal now, that is unacceptable. And, uh, and there, is all, there are also legislative uh, remedies to this as well. My hope is that the administration should uh, be able to correct this in time for the next busy travel week or weekend or day. Uh, but if not, we will uh, pursue a, a legislative fix to this. Something we will continue to follow as well. We've been speaking with Congressman Brian Higgins. He represents the 26th District of New York. Congressman, thanks again for joining us tonight. Thanks, Kate. Take care.